We're back and the list of Blender features just got even longer with the release of Blender 3.3 LTS. Now, as you know, there's hundreds of features in Blender, so let's dive right into the second edition of things you can do in Blender. Tip number one. Origin Transform. Sometimes you want to change the origin of an object. Maybe you want to rotate or scale it from a certain point, or maybe you just want to change the origin for your mirror modifier purposes. Whichever it is, there's two ways of going about this, and the old way, which I used to use, was to actually go into edit mode, select the entire mesh, and then move it away from its origin wherever I needed it to be. Turns out though, that there is a far easier way by hitting control plus period. This will bring up a new transform gizmo, which will be the origin transform gizmo and it will allow you to move the origin using the regular controls in blender now when you're done moving the origin don't forget to hit control plus period again so you can actually leave the origin transform mode you can pair this technique with an array and mirror modifier to get some very simple and quick stairs going on tip number two False color. When lighting an image, sometimes it's hard to see which parts of the image are over or underexposed. Now, luckily, Blender has a neat color management feature called False Color, which can help you solve this issue. With it enabled for our project here, we can see color ranges ranging from black and blue to white and red, and every color in between. Now, black, purple, or blue colors basically mean underexposed parts of the image, and orange, red, or white parts mean overexposed parts of the image. The whiter it is, the more exposed and the blacker it is, the more underexposed it is. By now tweaking the exposure slider under the color management tab in our project, we can adjust the lighting in our scene to get as many middle tones as possible. Now, middle tones, I hear you say, well, those are the light green, gray, and light blue tints, which most of your image should make up. This will ensure proper exposure for your scenes, which is also the best way to take your images into compositing as you have the most dynamic range within each frame to work with in your your compositing software. Oh, hey. Hello there. I wanted to ask you a question. What is your favorite Blender tip that you think everybody should know? Leave a comment down below. Use this emoji up here so I can find your tips and maybe even use them in the next Blender tips video. Tip number three. Normal imposters. When you're instancing thousands of objects in your scenes, it can become incredibly heavy on your computer. So instead of instancing a mesh, a tree mesh, if you will, we can also use an image. First of all, let's render out a basic image of our tree model using a white world setting. We now have a very flat but well lit image of our tree, which we can use later on. Next up, we want to enable the workbench render engine and go over here and change this to a normal matcap. With the normal matcap enabled, we can now render out this image as a normal pass, import the original image as a plane, which you can do by enabling the add-on import images as planes, it's very aptly named. <laughs> and after you've done that, select the plane, go into the shading tab and add a new image texture and a normal node. Now plug in the normal node into the normal socket of the principal BSDF and plug in the image texture into the normal node. Open up the normal image that we just created and now if we add in a light to our scene here, you will see that we have a tree image which is completely flat it's only made up of four vertices but can still be lit with all of its normal depth without any of the geometry of the original tree model slowing down your scenes so even when instancing thousands of them it won't hurt your scene as much and it will really really speed up your renders without doing too much for the look of your final scenes tip number four startup file if you do a lot of the same types of projects in blender it might be convenient to get a default startup file which caters to your work this will save you a bunch of time in the long run as it prevents you from doing steps you need to do every time again and again. If you, for example, often use cycles and maybe you want to replace the default cube with something else and also you might need an HDRI which you always use enabled by default, you can just save all of these settings to Blender's default startup file. Open up a new project, make all the changes that you need and when you're happy with it, go to File, Defaults, Save, Startup File. Now, whenever you open up Blender, you'll have all of these presets enabled by default. Tip number five, Shade Auto Smooth. 
Everyone who's done some modeling in Blender knows that hitting Shade Smooth on your models is a must. You'll usually also need to enable Auto Smooth to get things to look right. Nothing new there, I mean everybody knows this, except now with the release of Blender 3.3 this has become a thing of the past. And that's because you can now right click any object in Blender and instead of choosing no. Shade Smooth you can now choose Shade Auto Smooth, which will enable smooth shading and auto smooth with just one single click. I mean, isn't Blender just the best? Now the final bonus tip I want to give you is to join my Patreon. You'll get access to over 50 project files, including the ones used in this video, which you will learn a lot from, and at the same time, you will also help out the channel a lot. So that's a win-win situation. With that said, the list of Blender features is almost endless, so you should definitely check out this video as well and learn even more things you can do in Blender. Oh, and by the way, don't forget to leave a comment with your tips.